Howdy ho! We're gonna animate a bouncing ball. I'm gonna create polygon primitive primitive sphere. And zero the values to get it in the middle. And I'm also gonna create a plane for the bounce the ball to bounce on. This this can be any any size so just scale it up. And when I'm happy about where the where the plane is, where the ball is, I can select them both and do the old delete by type history and freeze transformations. Now a couple of things to check always before we start animating. If it's a new project, go to animation preferences and check that this is real time and not every frame. I also would suggest in Europe anyway to to go to settings this way and, and go to PAL 25 frames per second and save. And this is our timeline here. Um, let's give, a, give ourselves a bit more time to work on, so maybe 200 frames and go back to frame number one. Then we're gonna bring the ball up and set the first keyframe. Now if I'm only animating translate, I like to, instead of pressing S for set key, which by default sets every, a keyframe for everything, I, I press Shift W, which only gives me keys for the translate. Then I go to the next point in time, move the ball down, just from the Y axis, and set another key by Shift W. So now we have our first bit of animation. And we can go to the next frame, frame 20, bring it all up again, Shift W, go to frame 30. Come back down again and shift W and so on. That's our up and down movement. We could also copy and paste key keyframes here right on the on the timeline. So if we want the frame 20 up to happen again, go to copy, go to frame 40, do paste and paste and it copies it exactly where it was on in the tw frame 20. Now we can do the same for frame 30, copy that, key all the keyframes there to frame 50, paste and paste. And that's how you can copy and paste keyframes on the on the timeline. Now that's not a bouncing ball really. So we better go to graph editor to to make that look better. Window animation editor is graph editor. And here we have our animation curves. It's the translate Y that's only animated now. And it, you can see that it goes up and down. In graph editor you can navigate almost the same way as in, in, a, in any viewport. So by holding Alt and uh, dragging middle, middle mouse button you can pan you can zoom in with the scroll button or 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 the holding alt and right button there's also a way to zoom in to sideways or up and down and it, it requires uh, holding shift alt and and the right mouse button if you want to go closer to a key you can select it press f to zoom in. If you've nothing selected and you press F, it gives you the whole curve. So that's navigating in Graph Editor. Now we want to switch the tangent type of these to make this look a bit better. So uh, different tangent types are up here. And if I select the lower, the bounce, bounces and uh, 
press a linear we can see that it, the the bounce is a bit more bit more bouncy there's a different impact there and it bounces off it's still a bit a bit soft lame looking so if we want to control these, uh, these these little handles here to make it even bouncier with the with the middlemost button you can move them but they are they are by default they are locked so if we select that key point and press this button here which is break tangent after that those two handles can be independently affected so I'm going to do the same here for the next one break tangent to go even more bouncy and the same to the last one there so let's have a look playback a little bit better again and if I wanted if I wanted to bring in even more uh, more time for the for the top part of the bounce I could I could add a breakdown keyframe here press s uh, press shift w and bring it even even higher same thing here press shift w and bring it even higher same thing here just what you have to look out for when you're doing this kind of stuff if you move it too high and you get this kind of shape you know that it's it's not right or if you end up with something like this it just instantly tells you that something's wrong even if you no matter how many how many keyframes you add and and tweak the curve the curve has to stay nice and smooth so let's see let's see the bounce now or let's actually make sure that those are the handles are properly right okay so let's let's see what we have okay so we have a couple of bounces and we could if, if this was a, a forever bounce we could we can copy in the in the graph editor as well let's try that I select these these keys here go to in graph editor I go to copy and then I go to paste and I usually have to go to the option box if I if I'm doing it for the first time. This merge gives better results for pasting. Next, we want to make it slow down. So I would probably I would get probably rid of those those breakdown keys. But what I what I would do is start bringing these high points down. Probably have to reset those just to make it nice and uh, nice and smooth again another thing what I have to do is of course to to make the length of the of the bounce less every time so let's see the results now Drop it from higher. It's not perfect in any way, but we get the idea. You can keep keep finessing it as as long as you want. The next thing would be to add animation on another axis to make it go forward. So if I want to want it to go this way, it would be my blue axis which is translate Z. 
and we click on translate Z. Now there's al already keys here because we keyed all the translate values. Let's get rid of everything except the first key. Go to the end of my bounce and move move the ball key that so I'm gonna make the end faster and it's gonna slow down playback. Next we're gonna imitate squash and stretch. We won't be actually rotating rolling this ball forward. We're just gonna use scale to get uh, squash and stretch. And we're also gonna we're gonna use the rotate just to give give the the direction of the stretch. Keys give keys for the first pose by pressing Shift E for rotate and Shift R for scale. And as I'm coming close to the to the ground, I'm gonna make a stretch. And I, I just with this kind of an object, I just have to make it by scaling. I'm gonna give it little slight rotation as well and and press shift e and shift r maybe you find that it's easier to use auto key uh, which is down here when it's on every every movement on any channel that has keys will automatically record more keys so you have to be careful with it as well and then the squ squash Gonna rotate it back to to zero as well, so that it's nice and even. And just have to judge by eye. And then the next frame should probably already be stretch. Rotate slightly so to the direction of the. And then I'd like it after a couple of frames. I'd like it to return to the normal shape. So I'm gonna just return these values to one, which was the default value. Rotate zero. Let's see the first bounce. Okay, it's pretty exaggerated, but uh, we just we just want to get the idea across. And then we have to do the same for the for the other bounces. If we want, we can copy this around. Let's see, rotate and scale. That's what our squash and stretch look like. So we could go here and copy and paste this so maybe we'll the first bounce is fine then we're gonna scale that we're gonna actually use the scale tool to make that that less I'm gonna select all those keys and in where, where it's one where it's the default value I'm gonna make it less and again less and less oh, yeah, I forgot the, the important thing to return it to zero always after return the scale to one after after each bounce should always go to the up position and and copy the the, the default scale one there so that it's 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 not starting to stretch. Kind of deselect it when I'm when I'm playing it back because I don't want the wireframe to confuse me because it's not actually rolling forward. It's just we're just using the rotate for for the direction. Not perfect, but you can make a perfect bounce and, and amaze me. Thank you.